I am feeling great about this big guest that we have joining us today at 445. Basketball Hall of Famer, former Rockets All-Star, T-Mac, Tracy McGrady, coming back on the wheelhouse. I think I should ask him about his shoes again? Uh, well, Cody, here's the deal. So T-Mac agreed to come on under one condition. You are not allowed to be a part of the interview. Wait, wait. What? <laughs> I'm not even messing around here. I wish this was a bit... But I'm not going to turn down Tracy McGrady, who wants to come on our show, because you can't ask him questions. He'd been that mad about the shoe question this whole time? Yeah, so, look, I, we get a lot of new listeners, right? So I had Andrew pull the infamous audio of what happened last year when T-Mac was a guest on our show. And this is why when he comes on today at 445, Cody Stutes will not be partaking in the interview. T-Mac, I want to go back, and I, I want to take you on a trip down memory lane. I want to ask you about something that was huge. When it first came out, can you tell us a little bit about the T-Mac 1s, the shoe that you had with Adidas that came out, and it had sort of those those stripes, those lines across the middle. I think the blue version is the one that was most popular, but it had some other colors. How, what, did, did you have a hand in maybe the design of that? Did Adidas bring you some things? like Because I that was one of the more unique basketball shoes that popped up when it showed up on the market. It was pretty cool. Next question. <laughs> Tracy McGrady has been our guest. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Next question. That's all he had to say. Huh? I like just tried to awkwardly laugh there because I didn't know what was happening. Cody asked like a seven minute question, and all he got was pretty cool. Next question. I thought it was a good question. Next question. Apparently, it wasn't. Well, he remembered that and does not want you a part of the interview at four forty five. Okay. Well, you guys got to make a decision. You want me on the show, or you want T Mac on the show? For the rest of time? Well, I mean, you know. Is this an ultimatum? Today at 445, I guess you got to make a decision. Mm. I want T-Mac on the show. Okay, well, I'm going to go kick my feet up then. Hey, we we want you back at 5 o'clock. Yeah, you come back well, after the Well, hold on now. I leave at 445. I'm not coming back. Uh, you just get to leave the room at 445. You don't get to leave the premises at that time. That's not even enough time to go to the gas station and get a snack. No, it's not. And the vending machine here is not great. I'd like to negotiate an additional segment off. All right, so basically you're willing to sit one segment off if we guarantee you a second segment off? Yeah, exactly. Okay, now, would this segment be today or you could use it at a to-be-determined date? Uh, no, like a player yeah, to be named later in a baseball train. Today, today. Okay. No, no, not a segment to be named later. How do I get something like this? Well, you got to have... Well, you better piss off another <laughs> Hall of Fame basketball player. All right, well, we better get T-Mac on again soon because it's my turn today. <laughs> Tracy McGrady joins the wheelhouse today at 445. BK and I will ask all the questions. Cody Stutes will not. Let's head out to the HR and P guest line right now where we bring back on to the show a basketball Hall of Famer, seven-time All-Star, spent six years with the Houston Rockets. T-Mac, Tracy McGrady joins us on the wheelhouse. Tracy, it's Jake and BK. Appreciate your time. Thanks for coming back on the show. What's up, boys? How y'all doing, man? We're doing well. So how are you doing? I mean, your big basketball league that you started last year, One's Basketball League. You guys have a Showtime documentary coming out. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I uh, started a one-on-one -on -one basketball league called OBL, One's Basketball League, uh, last year. And uh, it was our proof of concept. Just to really give opportunity to, to guys that love the game of basketball, could play at a high level still, you know, just really didn't get that opportunity to pursue their career. And, um, you know, just five on five basketball is not for everybody. And I think, you know, it's, it's a, a ridiculous amount of, of one on one skill set that is untapped. And I wanted to give those guys a platform to show their skill set. So that's why I created this league. And I documented everything last year. We gave out $250,000 to our winner in Vegas last year. And, and the winner actually came from Vegas. I mean, uh, from Houston. Uh, so, we are doing a four-part series. I'm out here in Vegas, and uh, Showtime is a part of it, and it's showing on Showtime and Paramount, and we're premiering it this Friday in Las Vegas. Yeah, looking forward to it, Tracy. Now tell us kind of what viewers can expect when they tune in to watch this four-part documentary series. What sort of access are they going to get to this uh, league that you put together? Well, I think it's very important to understand that, you know, uh, what I was speaking on earlier, that, you know, there are some guys that you should know about that you don't know about right now and that has a ridiculous skill set in basketball. And I wanted to really uh, bring their stories to light and, and, and really shine a light on these guys to tell who they are as basketball players and as people as well. Every, 
most some of the the most important guys that came through, uh, you know, OBL last season. So we're going to tell their stories, and you're going to get a glimpse of, you know, how one on one basketball is through my eyes, and you know, hopefully, you know, people enjoy this documentary. Documentary is called Bonded by Ball Inside the OBL, and you can check it out once again across Showtime's platforms as we're talking with T-Mac, Tracy McGrady, Basketball Hall of Famer right here on the wheelhouse. And Tracy, let's start with the Rockets because they've been busy this offseason. So we're curious your thoughts going back to their coaching hire they made. Ime Udoka, the new head coach of the Rockets, your thoughts on that move? I love Ime. Um, Ime is a very smart, talented, uh, you know, players coach that I think uh, those young guys will really rally around and and go out and compete for uh, every night. Uh, I think he'll put them in great position to be successful. So uh, that was a great hire on the Rockets' part. And it's obviously been a frustrating few years for this Rockets franchise, Tracy, but uh, do you feel like they're headed in the right direction? Obviously, you mentioned you're a fan of Ime Odoka, but you feel like you like some of the other moves that uh, they've made in, in recent months? Um, I, I love the, the, the twin that they have. You know, I've been following that kid because he did play high school ball down in Florida in my home state. So I've been watching him for a while. Um, I think he's pretty special. Um, Jalen Green and and uh, Jabari Smith, like the core group that they're going to have, if they keep those guys together, which is going to be challenging, if they can keep that, those guys together for quite some time, I think the Rockets may have something. But, you know, it's always a challenge, man. It's a lot of moving parts and pieces in this league, you know, with all this money being thrown around. So, you know, the pieces are there. We'll see what they what they do with it. T-Mac, how important was it for the Rockets to bring in a guy like Fred Van Vliet to be their point guard, be a guy that's won a championship before, and be a guy that Ime Udoka seemingly really wanted to be part of this roster? Yeah, not only Fred, but Jeff Green as well. You need that veteran leadership. Um, the league is, is extremely young, and you need guys that you know can, can really show these young guys the right way. Fred has won a championship. Jeff Green is coming off winning a championship with Denver this year, so... Um, having that veteran experience and, and really showing the young guys the right way um, because, you know, I'm, I'm sure last year was just a dismal season for them and, and, and pretty frustrating for them. Uh, so now you got some guys that can really, uh, you know, show them how to be true professionals and how to approach the game night in and night out. So, you know, that, that was a great signing for the Rockets on that part. Tracy McGrady is our guest here on the HRMP guest line. He's got a documentary coming out on Showtime about the league that he started last year, the OBL. It's called Bonded by Ball Inside the OBL, and you can watch it on Showtime across all their platforms when it premieres on Friday, July 28th at 9 p.m. our time here in Houston. Uh, Tracy, I know you came out and, and you previously questioned why James Harden would want to come back to the Rockets when those rumors were in the news for a bunch of weeks and it felt like it was a given he was going to come back to Houston. Now that of course he's not coming back and he's still in Philly for the time being, what do you think ultimately happens with James Harden and did the Rockets maybe dodge a bullet, not bringing back James? Uh, I listen, I, I, for the life of me, um, James is in a great position. I mean, I just don't know how you would want to leave a guy that won MVP last season. Um, you're in a great position and, uh, you know, your coach is going to allow you to, to play your style of basketball. Um, yeah, it, just, it, it really just didn't make sense to go and join a young team that, you know, is, is, is many years from, from really winning a championship or even competing for one. You're right there in the situation that you want to be in, and it seems like you're running from, you know, that. Now, we don't know <clears throat> why James wants to get out. It could be some internal stuff that is just not being said or being put out. But, you know, from a basketball standpoint, I don't even know how you even leave there and go find a place that's, you know, even remotely close to what you the situation that you're in, in in terms of, you know, winning the championship. You're in a great spot. T-Mac, I want to go back to the one-on-one -on -one concept. If there was a tournament with every active player in the NBA right now, who do you think would win a one-on-one uh, -on -one tournament? Uh, it's two people. I would go. Actually, it's three. I would go with, and two of them on the same team: <laughs> <laughs> D. Book and KD and uh, Kyrie. Like those three guys. Really? Why? Why do you think uh, those three guys would uh, would have the best chance in that thing? I think those three are the the most. Uh, highly skilled offensive players in the NBA. 
Okay. I guess that makes sense. That makes sense. What about for you, man? What's next for you? What's next for uh, OBL? What do you have in store uh, after this documentary? So after the documentary, we, we're gearing up to start bringing OBL back in 24, bigger than better, uh, better than ever. And uh, we're working on our global piece that we want to do because we do want to take OBL global. So once we identify the uh, what, what North America looks like, you know, we're going to go global. But coming back in 24, and, um, you know, I, I think this is going to be a year to where we get the top guys that didn't play in it last year. So we got some great talent, but we didn't get the top, the cream of the crop that's out there, like non-professional players. You know, those guys were sitting on the sideline to see if it was real. Mm-hmm. Well, now they know that it's real. and They saw that guy, uh, John Jordan from Houston, win $250,000. So we're going to get some really good competition uh, for our first season coming up um, in 24. Tracy McGrady with us here for a couple more minutes on the wheelhouse. T-Mac, I'm on your basketball reference page right now. They have nicknames for you. Obviously, T-Mac, your most famous nickname. But are you aware that the other nickname they have for you is the Big Sleep? Is that a real nickname? Where does that come from, if that's even real? Bo Outlaw gave me that name (laughs) uh, when I first first got to Orlando. Uh, He he called me that because every time I got on a plane, that was the first thing that I did was was sleep. (laughs) And that's all I did was was sleep uh, during my tenure with with the the Magic. And Bo always teased me about that, so he gave me that nickname. So you fell asleep like right when you got on the plane and you slept throughout the entirety of the flight? I was asleep before we even took off (laughs) out of there. Out of there. And I I woke up when we was about to land. Uh, That's fantastic. I wish I had that ability. (laughs) That's awesome. Me too. Finally, Tracy. I still, but what's crazy, I still do that. There you I go. Just did. I just landed in Vegas and I slept the whole flight. <laughs> Lucky you. Uh, finally, Tracy, I always wanted to ask you about this. The, the the late great Kobe Bryant in his career, he called you the toughest guy that he had to go against, the toughest guy he had to guard. One, what does that mean to you? And and two, what are some of your favorite memories going against Kobe Bryant? It means a lot. I mean, you're talking arguably one of the, the, the you know, I have Kobe in that GOAT conversation. I don't know why guys leave him out, but. Uh, you're talking about, you know, one of the, the, the most competitors that has ever come through our league. So to, to hear that sentiment from, from Kobe, uh, it means a lot, you know, because I did work my ass off to really become the best player I possibly could become. Um, but going back to those battles, man, I just remember, you know, uh, the, the media and, and, and the barbershop talk of who was, you know, better, Kobe and T-Mac at one, at one point. And the competitors that we are, you know, we, we, we know that noise was being said, so we wanted to go out and, and prove to see who was the best. And it was just some, you know, some nightly battles, man, you know, uh, between the two. And, uh, you know, I, I always relish those moments when I got to go up against Cold and, 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 and those times where, you know, I was in my prime and he was in his prime. And although he was competing for a championship, I was competing and trying to win, you know, uh, a, a bunch of in-game battles that no one knew about. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, we can't thank you enough for a couple minutes today. Great to catch up with you. Enjoy Vegas, and good luck with the documentary. Look forward to watching when it comes out. I appreciate you guys. Take Tr- care.